So what we're looking at here is the 2016 exam one and two, and these are stripe charts. So every stripe represents a question. And these charts are available on 10minutequiz.com. So you can check it out for yourself. But the blue stripes represent the questions that were uh, answered correctly by a lot of students. And the red and orange stripes represent the questions that students found difficult. So question two here, only 31% of students answered this question correctly. So we'll have a look at this question. And in exam two, we'll have a look at in the data analysis section, we'll have a look at a few of these questions uh, where not many students got those correct. They were both towards the end of uh, extended response questions. And later on in the next video, we can jump into the finance section, have a look at these bright red questions here that students found really difficult. But it's data analysis for now. 2016, exam one, question two. The variables blood pressure, low, normal, high, and age, under 50 or 50 and over, are what type of data? Well, as a reminder, remember that all data can be either categorical or numerical. Within categorical, we have uh, nominal and ordinal, and within numerical, we have discrete and continuous. So blood pressure is not a number. Well, here it's measured as low, normal, or high. So it's not a number, it's categorical data. And remember for ordinal data, it just needs to have a logical order, low, normal, high, would be a logical order, so that is an ordinal variable. Now, as for age, um, I mean, 50 is a number, but we're only looking at two categories there, either under 50 or 50 plus, so that's also categorical, and there's definitely an order there, so that's also ordinal. I mean, sometimes you could get a gray area with these types of data um, classification, so for example, something like days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's definitely a category, um, and you could say, well, it does have an order because uh, Monday comes before Tuesday, comes before Wednesday, but where would you put Sunday? Would you put it at the end of the week or would you put it at the start of the week? There's probably some uh, gray area there, but in your VCAR exam, you're probably not going to come into a situation like that. In this case, blood pressure, low, normal, and high, and age under 50 and 50 plus are definitely categorical uh, ordinal variable. So the answer there is B. Okay, so this question from exam two is part of an extended response question, and it's about parallel box plots. It's an explanation question. We have to explain why the maximum daily temperature is associated with the month of the year. And we also have to quote the values of appropriate statistics. So if we're looking at a pair of parallel box plots and we're asking, uh, is the temperature associated with the month? We need to ask ourselves, looking at this data, does the month affect the temperature? And we can see that it does because it tends to be a lot hotter in May. Okay, we can see that uh, the box plot in May is, is a lot further to the right, meaning it's, it's hotter. The appropriate statistics that we're going to quote uh, is going to be the median, the measure of center, which we can see from the box plot. So something like May has a higher median, we need to quote it, uh, reading off from the box plot, it's about 14.5 degrees compared to July. I think the confusion with this question uh, came from perhaps that word maximum. And some students were thinking, well, do we need to interpret, uh, do we need to quote the maximum of the box plot? But if we read carefully, this box plot is actually just talking about maximum daily temperature. So generally on the weather forecast, when we predict the temperature, they'll predict the daily maximum. So these are all maximum temperatures. If we want to say that May was hotter than July, we need to talk about this distribution overall. So it's best to quote the measure of center, which is the median. So I guess it's the median maximum daily temperature in May, which is higher than the medium maximum daily temperature in July. Okay. And the last question is a linear regression question. Uh, part B1 was actually done quite well. It's just using our CAS calculator to, to find the regression line. The part that students found tricky 
was interpreting the intercept. So it's again, it's a worded question. And when we say interpret the intercept, uh, what we are talking about there is the y-intercept. So in our regression equation, it's going to be this number here, the constant, which is negative 1.7. Okay, this 0 0.94 would be the gradient of the line and the negative 1.7 will be the y-intercept. So how do we interpret that? Well, the y-intercept is talking about um, what is the y value when x is equal to zero. So in this case, when the actual temperature is zero, the predicted apparent temperature is negative 1.7 degrees. Okay, because actual temperature would be our uh, x variable, our x explanatory variable, and the apparent temperature is the y variable or the response variable. So interpreting the intercept and similarly, uh, a similar question would be to interpret the gradient are very common worded questions in the data analysis unit. So definitely have these in your notebook. It's a pretty standard sentence and we will just swap out whatever our explanatory variable is in the question and whatever our response variable is. So definitely one to have in your notes. So a quick review of the concepts covered in these hard questions. The first one was about types of data. Is it nominal? Is it ordinal? Well, the question is whether or not uh, it has a clear order. If it does, then it's ordinal. The next key point was in parallel box plots and how do we prove an association in a parallel box plot? The key statistic there to quote is the median. And for linear regression, how do we interpret the intercept? Well, that's the y-intercept. The y-intercept predicts the value of the response variable when the explanatory variable is zero.